Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm your host, Todd Blackstock. We have a great show for you today as St. Louis University women's soccer coach Katie Shields joins us to discuss the team's great success since taking over the reins. Plus, Lindenwood University is moving up from Division II to D1 in athletics and head football coach and former country music star Jed Stugart will join us with the details. And our Inside Sports crew heads downtown for the biggest unofficial holiday of the year, the Cardinals opening day. So stay with us for this and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. a four-year starter at Harvard and helped the Crimsons win a Division I National Championship in 2004 as their goaltender. Since taking over as head soccer coach for St. Louis University's women's team, she's guided the Billikens to four Atlantic 10 titles, three consecutive conference tournament championships, and four trips to the NCAA tournament. She was named the Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year after both the 2018 and 19 seasons. At this time, we welcome Katie Shields to Inside Sports. Katie, thank you so much for coming over here today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I mean, St. Louis University is like two miles from here. It is. And uh, it's right there. Everything is coming up from downtown. You got the aquarium, Bush Stadium, and you know now we've got the new soccer stadium going up, and it flows right into St. Louis University. What a great time to be a sports fan, especially a soccer fan here in St. Louis. Absolutely. I mean, the transformation, and I've been here about 10 years, and the 10 years I've been here is remarkable. Um, from the arch to the park, it's a whole new world, and I think a lot of that is the infusion of of soccer and the excitement around STL City, but then also what we're doing on campus with Billiken Soccer and Billiken Athletics. You know, the men's team has always been great. And over the last, I guess, five years or so, the women's team has come up to national prominence, you know, uh, under your leadership and guidance. You know, you played at Harvard, so you've obviously got a great education. You must be very smart and athletic as you help lead the Crimsons to a national championship. Winning a national championship must always like give you the hunger, you know, at the next level coaching now to repeat that, you know, in your new duties. Sure, sure. And we, I mean, our, our mission when we, we took over the program at SLU was really to build a, a contender, you know, build a team that is not only the best in our league, the Atlantic 10, which is mission one, you know, but then to put it in the, in the national spotlight and, and chase that top trophy. And we had the recipe for success. You got great homegrown talent. Uh, we got to recruit it. We have investment in our in our program and facilities. We got a great institution um, to to really deliver world class education. So um, we're excited. We feel like we're we're getting some some steam rolling, but uh, we're we're nowhere where we want to be uh, quite yet. Not quite yet, but you're on your way. Yeah. Who are some of the uh, you know the major players? Some of your great student athletes, you know, uh, in years past, recent years, yeah. and. You know, who's going to be taking over leadership roles moving down the road? Sure, and we've really prided ourselves on having the best in St. Louis choose us to come play their college soccer. And so we've done it really a homegrown model. Uh, you know, some of our, our superstars, we've got Hannah Frederick, um, who's going to be the best goal scorer in program history by the time she graduates. She's coming back for a senior season. She scored a goal to send us to the second round of the NCAAs last year. Um, we got another phenomenal uh, human being, off the charts leader. She's going to be a pro. Her name is Brianna Halverson. Um, she's about to be a six year senior for us from Bolivar, Missouri, and uh, just lights up the field um, as a back. And then the final one is one to watch um, Hannah Larson. She'll be a, a red shirt sophomore, technically. Um, she is as talented as they come and just an engine and a warrior. And I, I think she'll be a, a really special player in the years to come for us. With this being a hotbed of soccer, I mean, you've got a lot of great public schools and you have a lot of great private schools, especially, that are, you know, bringing out the talent. I think back in the 90s, early 2000s, it seemed like Duke had a pretty good pipeline into St. Louis. They were getting a lot of the top players to go out there, but it seems like, you know, you're starting to, you know, get the, get the people that live here. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you want to move out of state and get away and be free, but if you have a good soccer program, I mean, you might as well stay right here in St. Louis in town and, you know, and play for the home team. Absolutely. We've tried to close those borders, you know, and those three I mentioned, they're all Missouri born and bred, um, and, and we've been very 
uh, mindful to, to make sure that we keep the best home and, and provide them. I mean, we've, we've led uh, the country in the top 25 nationally in attendance the last four years. And so not only do they get to come and be close to home, play in front of their friends and family, but they get an unbelievable crowd and, and the backing. And this, this town shows for its own like, like no other place. So Herman Stadium must yeah. be a you know, real benefit. I think you're basically unbeatable the last few years. It's a bit of a fortress. You yeah, know, right there. So what is the what is the key and what's the secret to Herman? Why, uh, you know, I don't know, why can't you lose at home? Yeah, we, we've just been really trying to protect it, you know, make it a fortress, make it a place people don't want to come in and play. Um, and I think first, it's a it's a first class facility. It's a beautiful field, unbelievable, you know, setting in the middle of campus. Um, but. We're, we're just very, you know, I think it's a bit of pride and a little extra oomph. And like I said, the home crowd, that makes a difference, um, you know, playing in front of a, a friendly group. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's become something that we've liked to hang our hat on and say that, you know, we, we go perfect at home. As a prominent coach of a Division One team, you've got to be happy about the facilities upgrades and how they maintain things at St. Louis University. When you see it as a coach, you know, the visions, you know, we talked about the soccer, yep. the uh, MA, uh, the MSL soccer stadium going up. But on campus, you know, like with the uh, O'Loughlin uh, Family Champion Center yep. going up, seeing that, doesn't that give you a good feeling moving forward with recruiting and, you know, and liking your job? Oh, 100%. It makes it, you know, we where are where we want to go to be the best of the best it, it's in line you know we're, we're getting the investment in the resources and I think what it shows is when recruits come to campus when our current women are there it's just investment in them it's investment in their development their experience and so through the the soccer facility that's about to open in the next few weeks here and then the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center will be best in class in facilities in the country now what about moving forward with some of the players you know, some of the players, if they're really good, they have a chance to yep. move on to the, you know, the U.S. women's national team, which has had great success. I mean, they're probably as prominent as the men's team because, you know, they've, they've won, okay, at the highest yep. level. Do you think any of the players on SLU have a chance to, to compete in the, uh, you know, the national, for the national team and maybe in professional soccer? Sure. I'd argue our women are more prominent than the men, but that's they my, my perspective. Mean, um, but, I, I, you know, I do think we're, we're built and we've built a program that we are able to attract some players that have those aspirations. Uh, right now we have a few young alumni playing professionally, which is a, is a tremendous opportunity. And then Hannah Larson, she's from Columbia, Missouri, and uh, she is our redshirt sophomore. I think she has a, a great shot someday as cracking our U.S. women's national team. Um, and, and meanwhile, a lot of the others will have that pro pathway as well. So you do other things as well during your off time. I know you're coaching, you know, in, in some of the feeder leagues or maybe uh, national junior teams or, yep. you know, can you tell us some of the other programs nationally that you, you kind of help out with? Yeah, I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to work with some of our youth national teams. So our, you know, everything from the, the youngest ones um, up to essentially the U20 women's national team. And it just, you know, being exposed to that, that environment, it, it only helps us. It helps us recruiting. It helps us, you know, be operating at the highest level. Um, but most of, my, most of my days, most of my time is, uh, is getting the Billikens to the next level. Now you're from Southern California originally. You know, you know, sports is great out there. And then going to Harvard, um, you probably have a good balance between athletics and academics. What's the key? Because when you're practicing all the time and then, especially in basketball, when you got like the tournament going on, it's like, how do you have the time or energy or especially the focus to want to study? Because if you got a big game coming up and you're practicing, I mean, isn't your mind on the game? And it's like, you know, you got academics too, but how do you balance it all and teach the uh, student athletes? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously something I experienced and, and worked with, but I, th I think it's, uh, we have pretty extraordinary women on our program. Um, we're not taking easy majors. We've got nursing students, we've got pre-med, we've got uh, engineers across the board. I mean, we've, we have it all. Um, and I think one thing we always talk about with our women is we expect you to be world-class in both, world-class student, world-class athlete. And you don't have to sacrifice one for the other at St. Louis University. Now, our women, they average about a 3.6 GPA, which is extraordinary when you think about those majors. Um, but it, it is work. Those, those laptops, those books, they are open on every bus, train, you know, plane we are on. And uh, they, they put in their time. And there's not a lot of time to waste uh, for our women. You know, that's fantastic. So, you know, what else would you like to discuss? We've got a couple minutes left. I know uh, 
the tutoring facility there at St. Louis yeah. University is, is second to none. So if someone, you know, they, they may have to do some extra practice and may, you know, uh, need a little time to tutor, you've got those tutoring facilities available. Yeah, like we talked about, I mean, the, the investment in the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center is, is only going to, again, infuse more resources for our women. So they're not just coming out as able to play pro soccer, which that's, you know, we're developing for that, but that they're going to be leaders in their future communities. They're going to be ready to go take on, you know, a Fortune 500 company, that they're going to be able to go really change the world when they leave our gates. And, and that's what we pride our program in, is not just the, the on-field success, but the women we're producing to not just better the St. Louis community, but obviously um, the rest of the country and the world. So what do you think, you know, what's your vision in five years from now? Where do you think the SLU program will be and where do you think you'll be? Yeah, we, we hope, I'll be here, uh, but we hope to be, you know, furthering kind of our Atlantic 10 dynasty. You know, we're four in a row, we're going after a fifth this fall and really some aspiration. You know, we no women's program at SLU has been to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. So we're, that's our immediate kind of uh, goal. And then we want to get ourselves into a Final Four and get in that elite conversation. Um, so we're excited. We've got the resources to do it and uh, just have to continue to build this thing. Okay, thank you so much. Any final thoughts, anything that you'd like to touch on? I think we covered a lot. No, it's great. Thanks for having me. Go yeah. Belkins. Well, we appreciate you know the great things you've done with St. Louis University and continued success. Awesome, thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break now, but stay with us as Lindenwood head football coach Jed Stugert joins us. We'll be right back. Hey, let's check out this park. Find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Hey, welcome back to the show. Our next guest has turned the football program at Lindenwood University into a Division II powerhouse. The Lions Athletic Department has won numerous national championships and now will be ascending to Division I to compete in the Ohio Valley Conference. Here to discuss the move is head coach and former country music singer, Jed Stuger. Jed, thanks for joining us. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having me here. Excited to talk to you a little bit about Lindenwood. Yeah, and I want to talk about country music first. <laughs> it's funny because I saw, I was reading, doing some research. You opened up for Tim McGraw, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, yeah. Lone Star, some pretty big, big time uh, music events there in Nashville. You know, so how'd you go from being a country music star to coaching football in Linwood? Well, I always, I always tell people that's how good I was. I came from, <laughs> uh, from, I was so good at country music, I became a football coach. But no, it was, it was one of the greatest uh, chapters of my life. I, I always had a love for uh, kind of growing up farming and ranching a little bit. Um, loved country music, and I just kind of had a, uh, a knack for music, and I just wanted to learn to go be a country music songwriter. So I, after I got done playing college football, I, I headed out to Nashville, and that's what I went to do. And uh, it was just, it's too long, it'd be two programs worth to tell you this whole story, but it's, uh, you know, I was able to uh, uh, get, you know, have some of those great experiences, got real close, but then took a little break, came back to Greeley, Colorado, where my home was, helped a guy coach on his uh, high school football team just to kill some time. And then that next year, Northern Colorado asked me if I want to volunteer coach, uh, kind of when I was taking a break from music and just started falling in love with coaching and uh, love coaching kids and uh and, and all of a sudden, that just uh, that's where the direction went, and uh, and uh, been never looked back, and I've, I've loved that change. All of a sudden, you know, the first couple of years, I guess you're you know getting your feet wet, learning the area, learning the recruiting trail, yeah. but then there was a year where you didn't have a, a, a team. I mean, I guess there was a year off there. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, you're like nine and three, seven and zero in conference a couple of years in a row. The Ohio Valley loses Murray State. You know, the next thing you know, Lindenwood University, they go from, what, 2009, they're NAIA. Yeah. They go Division Two in 2010, 
And here, 12 years later, you're yeah. jumping to D1. Man, that's a big, big that's a big ascension, a big jump in 12 years. NAIA D2 D1. Yeah. Uh, the key to it is just uh, is when you, as a coach, is 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 the is the school committed to it. And I know uh, our president, Dr. John Porter, is a very uh, uh, has, has been with us now a couple years. Is an advocate for athletics, uh, understands the value of athletics, and he's whatever he puts his mind to, he wants to do it right. And so you know, so start with just how grateful I am for our whole unit university but for representing kind of the athletic side for him to be committed understanding what this is taking because uh, nobody at our place at Linwood knows that this is going to be an easy task we're, we're we all know that there's going to be uh, some challenges down the road um, so uh, but you know when you just it makes sense if you you know people drive through Linwood they see uh, the campus they see the location being being uh, in that footprint of, of St. Louis and, and especially with football being being the only division one um, uh, university that has a football team in St. Louis and and that's why we've got an arch on the side of our helmet we've got one of our logos because you know we we are a uh, St. Louis football team and that's what we and so how we've done it in recruiting it's how we're still recruiting St. Louis kids uh, as our home base and uh, it just makes sense and uh, I think uh, you know we've got the we've got the uh, the the support to do it and I think it's going to be a successful endeavor. Now SIU Edwardsville they don't have a football program. They do not. Um, no. And they're in the Ohio Valley so I guess would Southeast Missouri State University be the closest yeah. football team in the Ohio Valley? So that's yeah. that's like a two-hour drive. I mean yeah. that's a you can start maybe developing you know, Probably going to end up being rivalries. kind of that rivalry. I think it's um, you know, and we 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 already recruit against them so hard being from here. I think uh, and knowing Coach Tuke a little bit, their head coach, good guy, and uh, you know, I know he's he's always told me when he's been at our place for our camp. We have a great big mega camp at Lindenwood, and I remember he he's even kind of hoped that maybe we we didn't ever uh, the best kept secret. He said I I agree with him. So, but a great program. We know they're a great program, and we've got we've got some work to do to to start to kind of be uh, taking on some of the teams in this conference, but I, I like our chances. We're going to work hard and uh, in recruiting uh, the talent base here in St. Louis uh, in, in the surrounding areas. I mean, it's a good good place to start. You know, I was telling you in some of our uh, exchanges, text messages, and we've had Mike Jones, you know, from the tackle, Super That's Bowl right. hero. Yep. He's coaching St. Louis U High right across the street. That's right. Yeah. Kerry Davis, Hazelwood Central, Ken Turner, yeah. St. Mary's. Um, the list goes, well, William, uh, we have William Franklin, we have uh, Jeremy Macklin, Macklin coach at Kirkwood. Kirkwood. I mean, yeah. there is some talent here yeah. Yeah. in St. I, Louis. What I love is all those guys that come at the pride that they have for this, for this city and coming back, and, you know, especially they're so accessible. They come out, um, you know, we love recruiting their programs, but, you know, you just, that's what I noticed when I came here is, is how many great sports stories that came out of St. Louis, and you start realizing, and even out of Lindenwood, you look at Pierre Desir, yeah. who uh, just up there, you know, is in, is in out there at Howe Central, that, that, and gives back, is always back at our place working out. He never forgets where he comes from. You look at, uh, you know, I just kind of, it's amazing. That's one thing I, what I learned when I got here is just, uh, number one, what a great sports town this is. And, uh, you know, we know people love football. I remember, you know, when the, the Battle Hawks were going and, and being a guest of theirs, they invited me out, coach uh, brought me out, and, and to see that place packed. I mean, it just showed that people love football here, and, and, and uh, I'm just so stoked about it. Oh, you got to be excited, you know. I went to Southeast Missouri, so it's kind of fun <laughs> to see it. You know, I can take yeah. the, the road trip down and, Absolutely. you know, and yeah. do that thing. I was on a committee there, uh, Southeast going Division one because back when I was in college they were competing for the national championship every year in basketball yeah. kind of like what Maryville's doing now right um, you know they're in the thick of things so it's like do you want to be number one in division two competing every year or do you want to make more money expand and then maybe be middle of the road for a while right. until you can you know, build the resources, the talent base, and the recruiting. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you have going on right now. Because, you know, you're top dog in D2. Do you think it's going to be, how long do you think it, to compete at Division One would take? Because I know you're hitting the recruiting trail hard. Yeah, I, I think it all comes down to the support. I'll be honest with you. I was at, you know, I went through a transition at a different uh, school in Col you know, when I was coaching in Colorado. And, and uh, you know, I've been, when I was up at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and you see what North Dakota State's done, what South Dakota State's done. I mean, they're, even their women's, uh, you saw what their, the women's basketball team at South Dakota did. A lot of these teams that have done the transitions right. 
Um, and then there's teams that haven't done the transition right. Have they funded their sports uh, over time? Have they funded them immediately? Um, put a put an emphasis in, in the value of, of what what sports means to to an institution. That's why I have so much confidence. Uh, there's no way. We, there's too many good football teams. I can speak for my sport in the Ohio Valley for us to feel like, hey, we're just going to roll in. And we know there's going to be a lot of work. I, I, like I told you about uh, Southeast with what Tuke's done there, and I, Dean Hood's done at Missouri Mur Murray State, and on the down the list. So we know there's work to do. But what gives us encouragement is again to have a president that understands that value. The goal is, man, is introducing more more uh, general students to Lindenwood when they go out there and see what a great place that is to go to go to college and I think um, you know I think you know I feel confident because we have an administration that gets that and wants to support that and it gives us a better chance and that's why it's got us really excited we know there's work to do but we're up for the challenge there's no doubt well Jed thank you so much it looks like division one hockey is going to Linwood that's as well. another exciting I thing. mean you've got your uh, yeah. it's another show but yeah. you've got the, the swim team the diving team the baseball team yeah. phenomenal New yeah. facilities, you can see it right off Highway 70 and 94, First Capital. I mean, it's the big deal, and uh, I'm so excited for you. And thank you so much for joining us here on Inside Sports. Thanks, Todd. Thanks All for right. having me here. Thanks, Jed. Well, now we're going to head downtown and meet up with Angela Sharp to bring you some of the action before the 2022 St. Louis Cardinals opening day. And Angela Sharp, eat your heart out. Oh, come on, Todd. You know I love country music. That's amazing. Now I want to interview that guy. Um, but I know you're out here somewhere. I just can't find you. Of course, I'm out here for the home opener of Cardinals baseball, the unofficial holiday in St. Louis. So I'm going to interview some people while I look for you because I know you're out here having a good time. We're going to find Todd, interview some people. Let's go have some fun. I saw Christy Smith here with all these balloons. What are you doing out here today? Uh, well, first of all, I'm on vacation. You're on vacation? I'm on vacation from work. I take it every year around home opening. So, <laughs> I'm I wait, you actually plan your vacation around Cardinals home opener? Absolutely, every year, every year. And they all know at work what you're doing? Oh, they already know, so they're gonna be looking for me on TV. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, what are you out here doing with all these balloons? Um, well, actually, it was a gift for. It was a gift from some of my coworkers because they know I love the Cardinals. So they say, "Hey." So here I am. I love that. And even her coworker support taking the vacation Absolutely. gave you some balloons. Though, so are you actually going inside the game, or are you just out here to party? I'm, not, I'm just here to party. That's it. This is what I love. You can be a, a huge baseball fanatic and have to watch the game. Are you going to just want to be part of the party, and you're going to be part of that party, right? Absolutely, all day. I, am I going to see you dancing a little bit later on? Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready for all of it. <laughs> ready for all of it. I love it so much. Hey, can I get a Let's Go Cards? Let's Go Cards. <laughs> I know, I had to come by and say hi to the guys from Classic Rock 93.1 here, and I do Black Sox Saturday nights, 9 to midnight, but this is the uh, Classic Rock Cafe right now with Zob. Kevin Kev's here, but, uh, you know, I, this is fantastic. We found each other finally. I'm so glad I finally found you in the Sea of Red. But we, we got to go find the people and see what's going on. We got to find the people. And uh, what do you think, man? Jed Lance, now Jed Stugart. I know that you uh, were uh, I was dying. jealous. I was jealous. But what we can do is we can hook you up for another episode I, down the road. I can interview him later on? You okay. sure can. I would love to do that. All right, well, let's go have some fun. Let's go have some fun. All right. Hey, can I get a Let's Go Cards? Let's Go Cards! <laughs> you know if you find a band, you find a party. So let's go meet some of the people out here having fun. I know this guy. The world famous Charlie Dan Soprano. All right, who, who's on stage here? Do you know? Danger Zone. Danger Zone, and you like that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They go, they killing it. I haven't seen you dance around yet. Oh, no, I don't dance. I'll make you dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's usually what you do, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody knows this guy. We got that going on. Look at all these people out here. We got cameras. Hello. Hello. I don't know what to wait for. 
know what to wait for. I 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 know what to wait for. Hi! Start cheering! Fred Bird! I'm glad you found me over at Keener Plaza. I yeah. Mean, I saw you earlier, but like everybody in the world, all the Cardinal fans wanted to say hi to you, so I figured <laughs> I'd go say hi to the boys over at Classic Rock, but thanks for grabbing me. Well, and yeah. now we're here at Keener Plaza, from Keener Plaza to Ballpark Village. Ballpark Village, you know that was going to be a hot spot, right? I mean, look at the view behind us. Does it get any better the than this right here? The view is great. Plus, you got, you got love the music and Team Fredbird on the stage. This is a great spot to really warm up before you go inside to the game. Right. We got Tom Thomas up there, and you know he's always good to go. He's always game to hang with the guys. Oh, uh, he's, he's always having a good time. I think he's always having a good time. As you can see, all the people behind us are also having a good time. They sure are, man. Opening day, 2022. We're having so much fun. Let's go meet some of these people and see how much fun they're having. Let's do it. Landon, look who we ran into, the Cardinal Cowboy. Oh, I mean, of course we're going to run into the Cardinal Cowboy at home opener, I figure. You think I might be here. Right? I figure you might be here, yeah. <laughs> right. So well, what's, your, what's your function out here? Are you just like dress up and walk around, or is there something that you really do? Well, I mean, there's a whole method to the madness. I was uh, uh, an avid baseball player, and then I got hit by a drunk driver. And they said, well, I'd never be able to even take care of myself, but I felt like baseball gave me the uh, drive and desire to come out of a coma and conquer the world so I think the Cardinals had a lot to do with that because that was my team as a kid wow. so that's why I we're love this and, and you got to show off your rings to everybody look at these all these rings these are not fake rings these are real cupid zirconia hey <laughs> what's up guys all right I, I assume you're going to be inside later on absolutely are you guys going to be in there I'll yeah. be inside absolutely right. well I know you yeah, wow well, I'll be, uh, the, the best people for sports right here, Angela's been doing I'll be sports. riding on her coattails. That's right. <laughs> hey, you guys are awesome. Thanks for doing what you do out here. Hey, can we get a Let's Go Cards? Let's do a Let's Go Cards on three. Ready? One, two, three. Let's, Let's Go, go cards! cards! Woo! Giddy up. This has been so much fun, but I have to get ready to do my job inside, Bush City. I have to leave you. I know. You're so important. You're like the female Todd Thomas. You're that one girl. I, I, you I don't know about all that. I haven't been here for 26 years, but I'm excited about my job, so are you going to be able to be okay out here without me? I think I'll be okay, but I, I kind of like to go into the game with me. Uh, can you, like, uh, sneak me in? Can I ride in with you? We'll, we'll see if we can sneak you in. How about that? All right, I'll try to ride on your coattails. <laughs> All right, well, Tyler, you have fun outside. I'm going to go inside. I mean, this right here is the best of the best, isn't it? Okay. I'm Hi. riding Angela's coattails. You cannot come in here with come on. me. Please, Todd. please, Todd, no, please. No. Please. no, no, no. Fred Bird, who's going to win today? Hey, it's Fred Bird, opening day, downtown St. Louis. I'm Todd Blackstock. Thanks for watching Inside Sports on STL TV. Experience St. Louis. Come on!